This video is about the sampling distribution of the proportion and it is kind of like the sampling distribution of the means where you start off with a population with a certain variable x, I'm going to call it x, but x here is not a category, is not a numerical variable. It's more like a categorical variable and therefore um, its parameter is the proportion and not the mean. So we're not going to use mu and sigma here. We're just going to use pi. And pi here is not the pi that is used to calculate circumferences of, cir of circles. Uh, it is just a representation of the population proportion. Um, this is why some reference call it the capital P. But I'm going to stick with pi because it kind of like goes in sync with uh, sigma and mu. And the idea, if you have a variable x uh, that is categorical, could be smoking, could be heart disease, could be uh, presence or absence of the gene factor. And um, you can actually do the sampling distribution of that proportion by taking all possible samples of size n. And every time what you're doing is you're going to calculate the estimate of this pi. The estimate in the sample, we refer to that by and if you remember for the sampling distribution, you just keep taking samples after samples after samples. Every time you're just taking the same sample size n, but that is yielding a different estimate. So p1, p2, p3, etc. Till you've actually uh, depleted all the different samples of size n, and therefore you've calculated all the proportions estimates p. Uh, coming from that population, estimating that proportion pi. And therefore, these p become their own population. They become their own population of proportions. Um, and therefore, they actually, yeah, you can use, uh, you can use their, uh, you can use them to calculate the sampling distribution. But this time, it will be the sampling distribution of the proportion and not the sampling distribution of the mean. Uh, it just works exactly the same way the sampling distribution of the mean, but instead of calculating x bar every time, you're calculating p. And we kind of like mentioned this before. Um, if you're calculating in a certain statistics every time, you can calculate uh, the sampling distribution. So if you calculate the mean, it's a sampling distribution of the mean. If you're calculating proportion, it's the sampling distribution of proportion. If you're calculating median, the sampling distribution of the media. And therefore, here we're just calculating the sampling distribution of the proportion. Um, real quick, let me just do um, an, uh, an application to show you how this works. So what I'm going to do is what we did previously um, with a population of five observations. So this time, I'm going to have five people, and I'm going to call them A, B, C, D, and E. And my variable of interest, X, is going to be either if they smoke or not. So let's say A is a smoker. So therefore, I'm going to denote the fact that A is a smoker with a 1. B is not a smoker, so I'm going to give B a 0. C is not a smoker. C is going to get a 0. D is a smoker, and therefore, I'm going to give D 1. And E is not a smoker. I'm going to give E a 0. And by now, you've noticed that you have two out of the five people smoke. And therefore, if you want to calculate the proportion in the population of smokers, it will be equal to 0 0.4. And again, as I said, some other references refer to that as capital P, and it will be 0 0.4 as well. It's the same exact thing. It's just how you want to call it. OK, now how does sampling distribution of proportion works? Well. What you do is um, you just start taking different samples of the same size. I'm going to work with a sample size of 2 uh, because that's easy to do, I guess. And then I'm going to try to take all the possible samples of size 2. So the first one is going to be A with B. The second sample is going to be A with C. And it's going to be A with D. And then A with E. Then continuing on, I'm going to take B with C. I don't count B with A because I already counted here. Order doesn't matter. 
and therefore it's going to be b with d and then it's going to be b with e carrying on it will be c with d c with e and to finish off it's going to be um, t with e now if i did that correctly i think i should have 10 different samples one two three four five six seven eight nine ten okay now uh, let's look at their smoking status and let's see what kind of uh, estimates we get. Well, remember A is a smoker, so A gets a 1, B is not a smoker, B gets a 0. Therefore, in this sample, I have one smoker, one that is not a smoker, and therefore my P, my estimate of that pi right here, is going to be equal 0 0.5 because only one of the two is a smoker. In AC, A again is a smoker, C is not a smoker, so the proportion estimate is going to also be 0 0.5. In AD, both of them are smokers, and therefore my estimate is going to be 1.0. In AE, only A is a smoker, E is not a smoker, and hence my proportion estimate is going to be 0 0.5. In BC, uh, neither B nor C are smokers, and therefore my estimate is going to be 0. In BD, B is not a smoker, but remember, D is, and therefore my estimate is 0 0.5. In BE, uh, neither are smokers, so again, here my estimate is 0. In CD, C is not a smoker, D is, and then my estimate is 0 0.5. In CE, neither is a smoker, so my estimate is 0. And last but not least, in DE, D is a smoker, E is not, and therefore my estimate is 0 0.5. So those are all the possible estimates when your sample size is 2 coming from that specific population. And therefore they, they, they become their own population of estimate proportions. And therefore, I can actually ask myself, on average, what is the estimated proportion? Um, remember, I have 10 samples. And therefore, I can actually calculate the average estimate, and you know, the average of the proportions. Well, let's count. I have 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5, that's 1. Plus 1 is 2. Plus 0.5 is 2.5. So here it's 3, 3.5, and 4. So I have, if you add them up, it's 4. You divide by 10, you get actually 0 0.4 as the average of all the proportions. Now, if you notice, this average of all the proportion is exactly equal to the population parameter pi, which is right there. Okay? And... And this should not come as a surprise. We've seen this in the sampling distribution of the means. The average of the average comes out equal to the actual population average. And here, the average of the proportion comes out equal to the actual population proportion. Now, to make things right, I should note that this is an average of a population of proportion. And therefore, I can write it as mu of proportion, which comes out exactly equal to pi. And in this example, it's 0 0.5. Okay, now this is great. Um, let's actually take it a step further. All right, so I just clean this up a little bit. So what do we get? What do we got? Okay, well, we got that if you have a population where you are, you have a parameter which is pi, it turns out that if you take all the possible samples of size n, you will get a population of proportion of estimates. Uh, this is to say population of estimates. And these estimates are p. And therefore, you can think of this as the sampling distribution of the proportion not of the means because we calculate proportions. Remember, if every time you calculate medians, then you can calculate sampling distribution of the medians. Um, if you're calculating uh, standard deviation every time, then you can do a sampling distribution of, uh, uh, of the standard deviation. 
طيب uh, well the thing that I want to say is that it turns out that the sampling distribution of the proportion um, will have a very interesting characteristics that we've seen before if you meet a certain condition and that is if sample size times the proportion times the complement of the proportion 1 minus pi if this product happens to be greater than or equal to 5 then the sampling distribution of the proportion will have the normal distribution and it will have the mu of p which is equal to the population pi and it will have a standard error of proportion and yani a sigma of the p's because remember these are population of p's of, prop of proportions which will be equal to pi times 1 minus pi 1 minus pi is the complement of pi and you divide by the sample size n and you take the square root of all of that that is if this product is greater than or equal to 5 if this product is greater than or equal to 5 the sampling distribution of the proportion end up be, will end up being normal it will end up having a mu of the proportion equal exactly equal to the uh, population pi and it will have a standard error of proportion sigma of p which is equal to pi into 1 minus pi is divided by n and you square root all of this now why is this important well this is important because remember once the sampling distribution is normal then you can start using the z when we were dealing with the sampling distribution of the mean we were writing z equal x bar minus mu of x bar by divided by the standard error and the sigma of x bar here we're going to do something very similar we're going to write z it's equal instead of using the estimate x bar we're going to use the estimate p whatever the p is minus instead of writing mu of x bar i'm going to write mu of the proportion or even better i'm going to write minus the population parameter and i'm going to divide by the standard adder of the proportion and in this case it's actually pi into 1 minus pi and you divide by n and therefore we can start using the z again now this is true however uh, for reasons of time and for reasons of applications we're not going to use a lot of this z but the reason i covered it here is because we're going to use it once we start talking about confidence interval in the next videos you will see me talking about confidence intervals and um, i'm going to come back to that idea of the sampling distribution of the proportion being normal once you hit the n into pi into 1 minus pi greater than or equal to 5 and that will have direct application and will be, be able able to do some application and some exercises now, before I finish this video, I just want to finish up comparing the sampling distribution of the mean to the sampling distribution of the proportion, hopefully, uh, kind of like to bring in some clarity. So, let's clean. Um, okay. By now, you know that the sampling distribution of the means will be normal under two conditions. Either x has a normal distribution with, with mu and sigma, or the other condition is if you remember your sample size is greater than or equal to 25. And we call this, and we call this the central limit theorem. Well, the sampling distribution of the proportion again will be normal, but here there is only one condition, and that condition is that if sample size times the population parameter times the complement of the population parameter is greater than or equal to 5. And please notice that here it has to be greater than or equal to 5, whereas here it's greater than or equal to 25. Do not confuse these two numbers. The last thing I want to say uh, before we continue in the comparison is uh, the complement of the proportion is 1 minus so if you are looking at smoking and the proportion of smoking is 60%, then the complement is the proportion of non-smoker, and it will be the 40%. If you're looking at the proportion of men, 
then pi will be the percentage or the proportion of men and 1 minus pi would be the proportion of women. Uh, if you're looking at the pi being the proportion of having heart disease, then 1 minus pi will be the proportion of not having heart disease. And needless to say that they add up to 1. Okay, so let's continue. So once you hit the magic number where the sampling distribution of the mean is normal, well, it will have a normal distribution like this, and it will have a mu x bar, which is equal to the population mu that we defined right here. For the um, sampling distribution of the proportion, well, it will also be normal, and it will also has a mu, but for p now, and it will be equal to the population proportion. Finally, the sampling distribution of mean has a standard error sigma x bar, which is equal to sigma over root square of n. And the sampling distribution of the proportion will also has a standard error of proportion, which will be equal to proportion and pi into 1 minus pi and you divide by n, you take the square root of all of this. Before I finish, I want to just point out that actually this and that are not that different. Let me show you how. Remember that uh, the standard error is, as I said a minute ago, it's sigma over and well, if I want to write it up as with a square root for the entire thing, then I would have to put sigma square, right? Sigma square over one square root of everything. That would work. Unless I'm not interested in putting a square, I can write sigma times sigma over n square root of, over n square root of everything. Well, look at it. It's sigma times itself divided by n, and then you're taking the square root. Look what we have here. We have pi times, not itself, but its complement, which is kind of like similar, divided by n, and you take the square root of everything. So really, these two are not that different. Okay? So I hope that's clear. As I said, uh, the application for the sampling distribution of the proportion uh, is going to come up when we're working on the uh, confidence interval.